Well, we're up to the fourth and final installment on the Delton Fire Wagon. Yes, one of the most important parts. And just to get people caught up, if you haven't seen the other three parts on this, uh, Delton Brass Locomotive Manufacturer made this in 1985. They say they made five of these fire wagons and uh, we purchased serial number one. And now we're restoring it. Right because this happened to it in shipping. It was completely destroyed. So we've rebuilt all of the brass parts, repainted, reprinted the backdrop, and this week we are addressing the completely destroyed wiring and lighting system. Yeah, I would dare say that's a fire waiting to happen. <laughs> Now, in order to work on this at all, I had to remove these three screws which hold the building fronts in place. And in so doing, that pulls loose what wiring is left. Because what Delton had done is attached the two buildings to each other with glue and then wired all of that in place, mounting the lights to the building fronts and then gluing all of that in place. So there was no way to take this apart without ripping out all of the wiring in the process. Well, I think it looks really authentic, you know, knob and tube. Ooh, I don't know if we want to go back to that. Mm, maybe not. The model had been built using five millimeter screw-in incandescent bulbs, which were pretty common back in the 1980s and 90s. I used them in a bunch of my different models. They were sold by a company did you see in the hobby shops called Perfect and you could just buy a little bag of these things that came complete with the sockets and mounting hardware. Delton used two different size bulbs. They, they both used the same screw in base. I've never seen this small one before. This is the first time I'd seen it and those are also tinted yellow. And while those bulbs are still available as new old stock, they're really hard to find. What everybody's gone to are these right here, a five millimeter LED, a direct 12 volt replacement for those incandescent bulbs. There was a time when these five millimeter screw in bases were used in all kinds of things. I think of flashlights because I wouldn't have a flashlight unless it had that kind of a base. Yeah, and then they went to the bayonet mount. Oh, but that was just silly. I, you know, a bulb has got to screw into a socket. And I had these in all of my HO buildings. You just mount this in here and you'd screw a little light bulb in there and now mm -hmm. your building would light up. Well, it's so satisfying, you know, it's like you have this <laughs> light bulb, right? <laughs> And it actually screwed in like a real light bulb. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's no saving any of these sockets. They're mm. completely destroyed, and so I needed to find a new source of them, and well, nobody uses them anymore. Uh, the one, fortunately, that they use in the porch light came through unscathed. It's oh. the only one that came through unscathed, well. which is fortunate, or I'd have had to replace the entire porch light. But I just think that looks great, so I'm leaving it just like that. Yeah, Tom Burdett would be so glad. Now, after s just searching the internet looking for a replacement part, they are still made and they are still used. These are made by Eve Model in Germany. Well, they're actually made in China, of course, but they're sold by Eve Model in Germany. And so I found these through Amazon and it's almost exactly like what we used to use back in the day. It's just kind of a direct replacement for that. It's got the little stanchion that holds the socket. And then I would just stand these things upright inside my HO building and there's my whole lighting. Well, that's cool. And the only problem that I can see is I'm not quite sure how we're going to mount these because those little holes there are just microscopic and I can't very well get a screw down through there. We could try, but I'm not sure we'll be successful. Well, I have the perfect solution. Oh. I'm going to let you figure it out. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, we're going to have to get a little bit down in the weeds uh, about switching incandescent bulbs for LEDs and we're going to cover this in a lot more depth on uh, the Tuesday show. We're going to do a whole Tuesday show on lighting with LEDs. But an LED doesn't function on its own. 
Uh, they can, but for the most part, you're going to have to add a resistor for a load, especially if you want to run these on 12 volts. I've got a pack of resistors here that uh, will work for some LEDs. They're 100 ohms. Sometimes you have to use more like 400 ohms. I digress. But these, uh, these LEDs the, with the screw-in base are a direct 12 volt replacement. So I'm assuming that they actually have some sort of tiny built-in dropping resistor built right into the bulb itself. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with LED lighting. The light itself comes from the teeny, teeny, tiniest little pinpoint inside the LED. And the light is harsh and bright and the, the color is a little harsh too. It isn't the nice warm glow that we see from an incandescent bulb. It's brighter, it's much more direct, and the color is just not that warm. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of an LED and a, one of the incandescents. And boy, do I prefer the incandescent, but I'm switching the whole model over to LED uh, for one thing, I have to replace some of these bulbs with LEDs and I'd like everything to be running in the same way and using the same dropping resistors and so on so it's not confusing. So with the exception of just the porch light, I'm going to switch everything over to LEDs. We also thought it would be fun to have lanterns inside uh, the firehouse building. Karen's building lanterns and I thought it'd be fun to put a flickering LED inside the lanterns and since these are a, a direct LED they'll both have to have dropping resistors. I'm going to start with these 100 ohm resistors but I think they're going to have to be substantially higher. Since I don't really know how to do the math I just try things out and see what works. But I'm going to start with these 100 ohms but I'm probably I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to go with something more like these 470 ohms and maybe even higher than that. I can see from the color bands on these resistors that oops they're in the wrong bag. Uh, these are they, I think those are still 100 ohm but I've got some 470s around here so I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with those. And the resistors are going to have to be just soldered directly into the circuit so I'm going to mount those on the back of the diorama somewhere. Moreover, I wasn't quite sure what voltage I want to run the whole thing on. I'm just going to take one of these battery packs. We've got tons of these battery packs around here that hold uh, different numbers of batteries and different sizes of batteries. And uh, I'm going to try running this on one of these just 9 volt, small 9 volt, we used to call these transistor batteries. They're a very uh, low amperage, they don't have a very long life, and they're 9 volts, but I, I think they'll work okay for uh, lighting up the 12 volt bulbs. And because they're kind of tricky to get in and out of the little battery boxes, it's easier if the battery box isn't mounted permanently. So I'm going to Velcro the battery box to the back of the diorama so when it becomes necessary to replace the battery, it can be pulled away, making it a little bit easier to get to. And because it has a on and off switch, I need to mount that close to the top of the diorama, someplace I can reach over the top and easily get to the power switch to turn it on and off. And then these screw-in LEDs uh, are going to be mounted directly to the printed backdrop, but behind the buildings where you can't see them. And because they have the mounting hardware, that's going to be really easy to mount them directly to the backdrop and then position them in such a way that the light passes through the window and looks really nice. With the exception of the porch light, I don't want any of these bulbs to be visible. Boy, that's going to be a bit of a, an issue to try to figure out how to center those so they shine through the windows, right? And it's trial and error because uh -huh. you, can't, you have to put the building front on to figure that <gasps> out, so just moving them around. But I think they need to be just barely above the frosted section. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And then this is also where Delton chose to put in their yellow tinted lights. Mm. So it looks kind of like maybe, I don't know what a gas light hanging just barely above there. But where the light is so close to the window, 
you want that nice warm color. Well, with these LEDs... Yeah, that looks like the sun is in the window. Yeah, so we've got to work out some way to diffuse mm. diffuse that look. Right. And also, I, I'm thinking do the same exact thing Delton did, and that's figure out some way to tint these things. Right. Because that blue-white LED color... Ugh, that, it doesn't do a thing for me. Nope. Especially not in a 8th, 19th century general store. Mm -hmm. I also tried right here just sort of tinting these in software. Right. You can see I've pushed the whole image over to kind of a golden yellow. But I think that's the look right mm -hmm. there. Yes, if, yes. If we could achieve that, Ugh. that would be, but I'm not quite sure how we're going to go about that. Oh, different ways. And then there's going to be three of these LEDs mounted in the upstairs sleeping area in the firehouse. Here's two of them kind of temporarily in place but that positions them in such a way that they can't be seen between the two windows. Well, I think it'll be pretty easy to figure out because we kind of know already where the windows are. Yeah, this isn't like those frosted windows. No, no. So there's no trial and error. Uh-uh. We can just set them in place and that's that. Right. And I just can't figure out how to permanently mount these. Nothing seemed to work. We tried crazy glue. Nothing sticks to that nylon material those stanchions are made out of. Well, you've had good luck with double stick tape. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking, just to maybe double stick tape them on there. I mean, normally I don't like double stick tape, but in this case, nothing's going to be touching no. these. They're just in here. The, the, the glue joint doesn't have to be strong. I'm not going to try nailing them in place. No. And I just think your idea with double stick tape, the that's the way to go. Well, let's try it. Off this. That's so hard to do. On something that taints, see, without disturbing the sticky yeah, stuff. I can't get it off at all under any circumstances. And there it is, the final product. Well, that looks good. And that, that tannish wallpaper, uh, the blue-white color is completely diffused by the fact that it's bouncing off of that wall mm. and it has a nice warm glow to it. It does. Just like an incandescent bulb. Right. I love it. I do too. <laughs> now because the porch light is an incandescent bulb, I don't mind that people can actually see the bulb. That looks just fine. Moreover, it's real easy to get to this should the bulb burn out, which incandescents have a way of doing. And so uh, replacing that will be simple and I'm saving all of the original bulbs just for that purpose. The downside is that in order to get to any of the internal wiring or uh, LEDs inside, it involves removing the buildings from the backdrop and that means that the porch light's going to go one way and the wiring's going to stay attached to the to the building. So I'm putting the porch light on a small connector here so I can easily disconnect it. And then I'm drilling a somewhat oversized hole uh, through the backdrop here where it doesn't show uh, large enough to accommodate the connector so the connector can just slide through that hole and then the building front can be removed from the backdrop. Now we want to use flickering LEDs in the lanterns. These will mount to the back of the diorama with a hole so that they shine through to the back of the lanterns and light those up. But I wanted to see how the flickering LEDs would, would behave at different voltages. Right now I'm running this guy on 9 volts straight off the battery and it has very little flickering and it has a really nice red glow. Unfortunately, after a minute, it starts flickering wildly on and off, and then at a certain point in time, it just simply goes out, and that's the end of it. So uh, it doesn't like running on 9 volts. It's going to have to have a drop-in resistor. So I finally found, a, you know, I tried putting a 470 ohm resistor on there, and that looked okay, and I finally ended up going with two 470 ohm resistors. It, it flickers quite a bit. It's a little more yellow than red, but the upside of the whole thing is it doesn't blow out. And I tried hooking just one other LED up here, and that looks just fine. The two get along. This one's not flickering. The other one is flickering. But when I hooked the flickering LED up 
to all of the other LEDs, the whole thing flickers wildly. For some reason, the flickering LED, uh, in this case, the two flickering LEDs that are in the fire station are causing the whole rest of the diorama to flicker right along with it, even though the other ones are in parallel with those uh, LEDs, and I would not have thought that it would make them flicker on and off, but it sure as heck does. Well, this is an interesting effect. I mean, if we were doing a rendition of uh, Saturday Night Fever and Burn Baby Burn Disco Inferno, oh. You know what, I would, how about this, Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory. There you go. And this is, this is showing through the windows on mm -hmm. Dr. Frankenstein, because if, if somebody was creating a monster from scratch in there uh, using electricity, I'd, I'd go with that. Right, we're a little short on humor. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to avoid shorts in the, in the project here. In this case, we would be trying uh, to create one. Yeah. Well, and as the Mythbusters would say, here's your problem. Uh, these little 9-volt batteries, not only is it not providing the full 12 volts that the screw-in LEDs are rated at, but it just cannot keep up with the amperage that this whole thing is pulling. The battery itself is heating up. It also goes dead in about 45 minutes. Well, that's kind of false advertising if they say it's an Energizer Max. What happened to the bunny? Oh, I think he's not beating that drum uh, anymore. Probably not. You killed the rabbit. But it just isn't supplying enough amperage for the whole diorama. And also the voltage is a little low. And uh, that's causing the, the current in the entire diorama to surge up and down as the flickering LEDs flicker on and off. So I'm going to have to abandon the idea of running this on a single 9-volt battery and actually go to a larger 12-volt power pack. And we, we have some of those around here. It uses eight 1.5-volt energizers here. And uh, this, I'm hoping, will eliminate the problem. Moreover, I don't think this will go dead in half an hour like the other one was doing. This has a lot more amperage and a lot more amp hours, and I'm hoping, I'm suspecting that switching to this power, su power supply power pack will solve the problem. I also decided to add two of these larger resistors in series with the two LEDs that are inside the general store opposite the windows. Uh, to try to tone those down, that doesn't really help that much. But I'm also using uh, two of these, one on each leg of each flickering LED uh, to keep the LEDs from burning out. And now at this point, my other LEDs are not flickering. The flickering LEDs are flickering. The steady LEDs are staying on steady and it's gotten rid of that problem of the flickering LEDs dragging the other LEDs around with them. Moreover, the flickering LEDs are flickering nicely. I, again, I'd like to see a little less flickering, but if I up the voltage to, to slow them down, it burns them out. So uh, at this point, everything seems to be working fine, and I think I can just go ahead and sort of put the whole thing together, which means uh, Properly wiring the whole thing now, installing it all on the diorama, uh, dressing everything up so it looks correct and isn't shorted out and, and uh, looks a little bit better than this mess. And install the flickering LEDs directly on the back of the diorama so that they're lighting up the lanterns that are pasted to the, the uh, printed backdrop. And if you recall from the video on using Photoshop to resurrect the printed backdrops which had been destroyed, I added a lens flare effect over the top of the printed lantern here to make it look like it's already glowing. And I think that turned out really neat. Well, I like the idea of building a little lamp for those. You've done that in a lot of your models. Oh, well, like, they come with the idea of those pre-made models that I buy. They already have the stuff to make lamps. So I've learned a lot. It's been like a lesson in beads. Yes, and you have figured out how to, just using the, the parts that you have collected, build something like that. Exactly. 
and it was even flat on the back. Well, that was after I filed it off because it has to fit flush against the wall for oh. what we're doing. So I used that little Dremel you gave me for Christmas and just buffed off the back. It's a plastic bead, so that worked really well. It was so smooth and shiny, I mm -hmm. thought maybe you just had a flat bead. Oh, that would be cool, but not always. I think if I'm steady handed enough, I can use like uh, crazy glue to glue that in place so that it stays without a mark. Up even though it's not. Yeah, it's picking up the light from behind. Wow, that looks great. Well, I hate to pat myself on the back, but I think it looks pretty good there. I think we need to turn down the lights and mm. see how it looks in a dark room. Right. That's great. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, I think it looks pretty darn good if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the way around, I love your lantern. I love the way it's picking up the lens flare effect on the backdrop. I love the way it's casting shadows onto the doors and everything. Isn't that neat? I mean, it's just, to use a bead like that, they really come across fun. Now, I was thinking of putting another flickering LED over here behind this table lamp, but I think you've got a better idea. Right, I mean, it has to be a lamp, it's inside. And there it is, another bead lamp. Yes, made out of little tiny beads. And as the vernacular goes, this one's something of an Easter egg in that you really have to crane your head around through the window to see it. Right, but when you do, oh my gosh, there it is. Little, little precious hidden things. Yes. So this is the exact same process. Exactly the same. I had an extra one of those little beads and then some other beads and some bead caps. And anyway, here we are. And I, I just drilled a hole there where mm -hmm. the table lamp is to shove the LED in. And then uh, same process. Yeah, just, just glue it in place and all of a sudden you have us a little lamp. And that is really fun. Isn't that neat? Look at that. You can see the light coming from it, mm -hmm. but you really have to get your nose down there to see the lamp itself. Right, on a certain angle you can, it's like, what? And you can also sort of see it through the fire doors because there's a there's a hallway that goes up in there. Uh -huh. If you look in through the doors of the firehouse, you can see the lamp up in there as well. See, this is what makes modeling fun. You don't get to see everything except at a certain angle. And I love doing the lighting, especially mm -hmm. when the lights come on. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, it's so neat. Wow. Now, those lights in the frosted windows on the general store, I can see why Delton chose to tint those things yellow. Absolutely. That looks hideous, especially oh. with the LEDs in there. Uh-huh. Boy, blue, white, looks like fluorescent lights or yes. something. Yes. So, I got on Amazon looking for something to tint light bulbs with, and what I came up with is this... Uh, glass paint kit. It's oh. for making the little fake uh, stained glass right. on your drinking glasses and stuff. Uh -huh. I thought, ah, there you go. I bet that's going to work. And there it is in place. It's a little more yellow than I'd like. Right. The picture makes it look more yellow than it really is. But um, we've ordered some little caps that go over these LEDs and we're going to try those. They're little diffuser caps. Right. And we might try putting those on there, but just tinting them the yellow like this has helped a lot. Oh yeah, nothing like a blue-white light, you know, Ooh, where? Especially in a 19th century building. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So I'm okay with this. Yeah, looks okay. And now I need to uh, police up, as they would say, the back of this, organize it uh, so that it's not looking so much like a rat's nest. And uh, I'm using heat shrink tubing on all of the soldered connections. These are, of course, little vinyl tubes that you can buy and put over your wires. And then you heat them up with a heat gun here. And they shrink down and adhere themselves to the connection, covering the connection up and protecting it from shorting out. And then I'm securing everything in place with black gaffer's tape. I'm not sure if that's actually going to hold it there long term, but we shall see. If it doesn't work, well then it doesn't work. 
and I, I'm going to come in and paint over some of my little marks that I put on here for drilling holes. Anyway, there it is. That is really cool. And what a what a project we got ourselves into. Uh, you it? know, in a way, it was a lot of fun. It's unnecessary. And it's uh, a yeah. shame that it got destroyed in shipping in the first place. Right, but then we had a chance to make it even better. And you know, I'd love to know the history of the other four of these. Right, so would I. So if anybody out there knows anything more about these, or if you have one of them. Right, that's, it's a curiosity. Um, love to know if the other four were ever actually built, or if this is just the only one. We know it's serial number one, but we just don't know anything more about the five that were supposed to be built. I'm really happy. I'm yep. really happy. I, I think it's better than it once was. Oh, it's astounding. Well, at the very end here, there's going to be a link to a playlist with all four of these videos. And I'd just like to take a second and ask people, if you can, uh, to become a member of the channel. There's a join button on the main page, and it pushes a few dollars our way, and it really helps out. Right. But the number one thing you can do, if, if you are not a subscriber, it really helps uh, helps us out if you would subscribe. And the easy way to subscribe is with the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. We'll see you then. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.